Hello guys, welcome to study algorithms and today we would be looking at finding the diameter of a binary tree. First, we would be understanding what is the diameter of a binary tree and look at some sample test cases. Next, we would discuss the brute force solution and the problems you may face. Next, we will try to intuitively think of the problem and come up with an efficient solution followed by a dry run of the code. So, let us dive into the problem. To understand this problem, first you need to understand what do you mean by the diameter of a binary tree. The diameter of a binary tree is simply stated as the longest possible path that you can find between any two nodes in a binary tree. So, to demonstrate it, let me just take up three examples. You have tree number one, tree number two, and tree number three. In tree number one, the longest possible path between two nodes that you can find would be this. In tree number two, the longest possible path that you can find would look something like this. So for tree number one, our distance is two. And tree number two, our distance is seven. But please note that it is not necessary that the longest path would include the root node. A good example of this can be seen in tree number three. In tree number three, the longest path would be something like, and this has a length of five. So this is how you define the diameter of a binary tree. So as per the problem statement, you are given a binary tree and you are required to tell me the length of the diameter. Let us see how we can go about solving this. To get started, let's just try to have a small tree as an example. A good way to solve any problem is to come up with a solution first and then try to optimize it. So given this problem, what solution can you think of? The first solution that comes to my mind is what if I just find the distance between each of the node of the binary tree? Let's say 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 1, 5. Now each of these nodes would have some distance. So node 1, 2 has a distance of 1, 1, 3 has a distance of 2, 1, 4 has a distance of 2, and 1, 5 has a distance of 1. Similarly, if I go ahead and compute the distance of each of the nodes with respect to every other node, how would it look like? Now these are all the possible distances between each of the two nodes in that binary tree. And if you look at it, the maximum possible distance that we found is 3. And hence, this would be the diameter of the binary tree. The problem with this solution is very obvious. We only have five nodes in the tree and we have 10 different distances to calculate. What would happen if the tree size is, let's say, a thousand nodes or if the tree size is, say, 10,000 nodes? The number of these distances would just explode and calculating all of them would result into unnecessary calculations and a lot of time wastage. So definitely there should be some better way to solve this problem. Let us try to have a look at it. Let us try to look at the original example that we had in the problem. If you think about this problem intuitively, how long or how deep a tree is, it can be determined if you know how deep its left subtree and how deep its right subtree are going. So, if we can calculate the depth at each node in the tree, then maybe we can come up with some kind of a solution. So, let me just try to calculate the depth at each level of each node in the binary tree. I would start off with all of the leaf nodes. So, node 2 will have the depth of 1, node 6 has a depth of 1, node 0 has a depth of 1, and node 9 has a depth of 1. Now, moving on to the parent nodes, node 7 has a depth of 2, node 5 has a depth of 2, and here's the tricky part. When you come to node 4, you need to just know the maximum depth. So, the left subtree has a depth of 1 and the right subtree has a depth of 2. Since we are interested in calculating the longest path, we would be looking at the maximum depth. So in this case, the maximum depth at node number 4 is 3. Going over to the right, the maximum depth at node number 8 is again 3 because it has no right subtree. Going up to node number 3, it has no left subtree, so its maximum depth is 4. And going to the root, the maximum depth is 5. To verify our result, we can easily see that for node number 1, this is our maximum depth. 
for node number four, this is our maximum depth. And hence, we can easily conclude that these numbers are representing the maximum depth at each of the levels of the binary tree. Now, given this scenario, we can come up with the total depth for each of the nodes in the binary tree. And this depth would be given something like depth of left tree plus right tree. So, if we are able to calculate the total depth at each of the nodes in the tree and we keep a track of what is the maximum depth that we could found by combining the left subtree and the right subtree, that should give you the diameter theoretically. So, let us just try to calculate it. For each of the node, we are adding up the left depth and the right depth. Hence, you see, we got the maximum depth at each of the node in the binary tree. If you see, the maximum depth that we found was at node number 1 and its value was 7, which comes out to be the diameter of your binary tree. And hence, this is your answer. Let us see how we can go about implementing this algorithm. This problem also has a recursive solution where we treat each of the left subtree and the right subtree as a problem in itself and then recurse all the way up to the stack. But recursion gives you a lot of problems while debugging and hence we would be looking at an iterative approach. For the iterative approach, we initialize a stack and a node depth map. This node depth map would be storing the node and the maximum depth of each of those nodes. We start off with the root node and that is 1. To perform a post-order traversal, we push elements into the stack until we reach a leaf node because the root node needs to be processed at the last. So while iterating through this code, we would be pushing 1 into the stack, then 4, and then 2. Now 2 does not have any child nodes, and hence we can process it. For processing, what we do is we calculate the left depth and the right depth. In this case, both of them are 0, and hence the maximum depth available at node number 2 is just 1, and hence we update this value as 1. If you just try to look back a couple of seconds ago, we had updated this value to 1. Moving forward, we pop out 2 from the stack and hence we reach node number 4. But 4 still has some child nodes. So we would be processing 5 and then 6. 6 would be treated in the same way as node number 2 and hence we are updating our map as 6 and 1. While we are updating our map, you see that we are also trying to update the diameter of the tree that we find. Now this is the maximum value we can find for the left depth and the right depth. So up till now, our maximum value is 1 and 0 and hence we update our diameter to be 1. Going forward, we pop out 6 and then we'll, we are looking at node number 5. For node number 5, we see that left depth is equal to 1 and hence while putting it into the map, we would be updating its value. So this would update something like this and if you remember we had put the value 2 in here going forward we pop 4 from the stack now 4 has both left depth and the right depth the left depth of 4 is 1 and the right depth of 4 is 2 and hence when we update it into the map we would be putting like 4 and 3 now we are again updating the value of diameter and that would be the value that we have found so far and the new value that you're finding at node number 4. This would be 1 plus 2 and hence our value updates to 3. Moving on, we go on to the right subtree. So then we push 3 into the stack. Since it has neighbors, we push 8. It has neighbors, we push 7 and then again we reach 0. 0 is again same as node number 6 and node number 2. So we would just pop it from the stack and update our map. Same happens with number 9. Now coming on to number 7, we are looking at the left subtree and the right subtree. So this value would update to 2. Going over to number 8, this value updates as 3. And then going over to number 3, this value updates as 4. And now we've reached the main node and that is number 1. So when you reach at number 1, let us just try to look at the left depth. So the left depth at node number 1 is 3, the right depth at node number 1 is 4, which you can see over here and here. And we need to update the diameter, that would be the maximum value of the value that we have up till now, that was 4, and the new value left and right. So that would look something like max of 
4 comma 3 plus 4 which turns out to be 7 and hence this is your answer the time complexity of this algorithm is order of n and we occupy order of n extra space more details on the recursive solution can be found in the problem description mentioned in the link below both the solutions work in order of n time it's just that the iterative approach it's easier to visualize please feel free to reach out to me in case of any doubts and leave your feedback in the comments below thank you